Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is your brother Yael Ezra Ben Levy coming to you with another quick video. Um, I had to make this video today because um, for the last few days I've been having um, dialogues um, back and forth with um, some Christians that I know. And I have found out just how deep this thing really go for some of them. It is amazing to me that you, your love for Jesus, your devotion to Jesus is so deep that it will keep you from even reading scriptures from both the old and new. What amazed me was even when I only shared New Testament, they still wouldn't read it. They did not want to take the time to reason, to rationale the argument, the challenge, the debate, the question. Because what is so important to them is what they believe. Forget if what they believe can be supported within the Holy Scriptures or even within their New Testament writings. I have dialogued with people where I gave verses from the New Testament, direct sayings from Jesus, Yahabashai, Yehoshua, whatever name you, you feel to put upon him. And it irated them so. They became so angry because I went to their text and extracted something that their Messiah said, that their God said, that violates what they believe. Now, it's one thing to have a belief based on a text, but it's another thing to have beliefs that, that violates even your own text. The level of belief and devotion you have has to be really strong to violate your holy text. The level of love has to be so great to violate even the words of the Most High. That is a level of faith that is mind-blowing. Yet you hold up the Bible and say, this is your final authority. You believe it from Genesis to Revelation. But then when I give you scriptures from verses from both sides, because let me make this very clear. To me, the scriptures is only from Genesis to Malachi. I do not see the New Testament as scripture. Now, I know many of my Christian um, family and friends do. But for you to even not want to read what's even in the New Testament blows my mind. That is just mind boggling to me. And when I give you a thus said Yehovah, a thus said the Lord, you respond with your belief. When your belief completely and shows without a shadow of a doubt, it violates the very words of Yehovah. But what's even more shocking, it even violates what's written in your New Testament. So that lets me know. Stop saying the Bible is your final authority because the Bible is not your final authority. What you believe is your final authority. So let's just be honest. The text means nothing to you. Your belief is what you hang your hat on. It is your belief what you hang your coat on. So all that matters is what you believe deep within your heart. And a few verses that you could find that may line up with it. But anything that may come against that which you believe, you don't want to deal with it. But it's coming from the same book that you say you believe. Now, it would be different if I was trying to introduce another text. Then you would have every reason to say, you come at me with another book. I'm not even dealing with that book. I understand that argument. 
But when I'm coming at you with the same book that you say you embrace, but you don't want to deal with it because it, it violates what you believe with all your heart. The things that I believe and know is supported by the text I uphold. I do not have a belief that is contradicted by the text. I have not. Um, let me put it this way. The things I believe has been shaped and molded by what is revealed in the text. I do not have concepts of commandments, laws, and statutes that are not written in the text, that is not supported by the text. I did, I did not come up with my own um, standard of righteousness. My standard of righteousness is supported by the text, not by what I believe with all my heart. So my brothers and sisters, I want to read these two verses that shook a lot of people and got them angry, got them upset, got them um, saying I'm in error and that I'm not right. This is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 and 11. Just two verses. Ye are my witnesses, saith Jehovah, my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me. The only thing that we need to know and believe is Jehovah. And understand that I am he. This is something that we need to understand as the people of the Most High Yah. This is something that we should know and understand without a shadow of a doubt. Understand that I am he and before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Verse 11. I even I am Jehovah and besides me there is no Savior. Those two easy verses to me, not very hard to understand, not very hard to grasp at all. But when you try to insert, when you try to remove what is in the text because you believe something else, who is really an error? But anyway, that's just all I wanted to share. You have to ask yourself. Whose report do you really believe? Because if I can give you the report of Yehoah, or thus say Yehoah, and your response is what you believe, or what Paul said. I know many, I, I got to share this, I got to say this right here. I know many Christian women that say the New Testament is divinely inspired. It is the very words of of God himself and that Paul is a righteous holy man chosen by God to be his mouthpiece so are you believing everything that is written in the New Testament Paul said he suffer not a woman to teach he said for the woman to remain silent my dear sisters my queens when you go to church are you silent are you telling me when you go to church, you don't say a word while you're in church? You don't praise and worship God. You don't say anything when you're in church because you're honoring what he said, because you say it's the word of God. How are some of you, um, dear sisters, bishops and pastors and all this? Because Paul said he suffered you not to even speak, not even to teach. So explain to me how the New Testament is the word of God, yet you disobey that. This is all I wanted to share at this time. I had to put that in there, but this is just something I want to share. I don't have no problem with women uh, preaching and teaching because we see that Yehoah had Miriam alongside Aaron and Moses as the leaders of Israel. We see that Yehoah raised up the prophetess Deborah to be a judge over all Israel. So evidently, Jehovah do not have a problem with women teaching. Definitely about, about women speaking. Because we see that even Mary, when they crossed 
um, the Reed C, or commonly known as the Red C, she produced a song. She led with a song and the people followed. The other women ran and joined her in song. So where, where were they silent at? Where's this talk about Yehovah don't want um, women to preach or teach? That's Paul. That's Pauline. That's Paul saying that. You cannot find one thus said Yehovah, one thus said the Lord that support what Paul said. So many of you follow the words of Paul and you have denounced you have rejected the very words of Yehovah himself. And on that, I will cease. Peace.